Hello, welcome to today's DataVox webinar, Remote Surveillance and, Ask and Access Control Made Simple, presented by Vercata. My name is Jessica and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this webinar through Cisco WebEx events and the audio can be heard through your PC or by calling into the phone number listed and with the access code provided in your confirmation email or calendar invite for this event. Today's webinar is being recorded on behalf of DataVox and participation in this event indicates your consent to being included in that recording. All attendees will receive an email with a link to the completed recording 24 to 48 hours post event. If you have any questions for the presenters at any time during this presentation, you may submit those questions via the Q&A feature to the bottom right of your screen. This should already be turned on. Simply click Q&A and the text box will appear. Our panel will be responding to these questions throughout the presentation via text and will respond verbally at the conclusion of the presentation. If you are in need of support or have a question not pertaining to today's topic, please utilize the chat feature and I will be happy to assist you. This feature is separate from the Q&A feature and can be turned on by clicking the chat bubble in the lower center of your screen. Now that we have reviewed the features of this webinar, we would like to start off today's presentation with a few words from our Director of Physical Security at Databox, Scott Ferguson. Scott, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to thank you to the marketing team for helping us put all these events together, especially Jessica. And, um, you know, I am Scott Ferguson. Um, like Jessica said, the director of physical security here. I run our physical security practice. Uh, I would like to personally thank you, each and every one of you, for taking the time this morning to attend our weekly webinar series. Um, next week, so this is the third one for physical security. So I apologize if you guys have had to see me for the last three days. Um, for those who have had attended multiple sessions, but I do appreciate it or listen to me talk. Uh, next week we have Intermedia, Sarah Nova, LifeSize, and Cisco. So please sign up if you haven't attended or if you haven't registered for those. Today's webinar covers video surveillance and access control in the cloud with Verkata. Um, with that being said, we have Taylor, Nina, and Chad here. So I'm going to hand this over to Chad and let him do his thing. So thank you guys. Thanks, Scott. Hey, hey everyone, this is Chad Lorette. I'm the Senior Channel Sales Manager over here at Verkata. Um, we're an enterprise video surveillance solution that um, supports a cloud hybrid platform. Uh, with me today, we have Taylor Jung, one of our account executives in Texas, as well as Nima Imrani, uh, one of our enterprise solution engineer. And today we're gonna be covering uh, a couple different things about our platform, but first, uh, we are giving out a $20 Uber Eats credit or your choice of a Verkata branded Yeti tumbler to those that attend the webinar today. You will, we will follow up with you after the webinar with a survey um, asking you to confirm your shipping address if you'd like the Yeti tumbler uh, or confirm your email address if you'd like the Uber Eats credit. So thank you very much in advance for those that uh, took the time to join us. So today we're going to cover um, our cloud hybrid video surveillance product, as well as our cloud access control product that's launching in just a couple of months. Um, and then we'll kind of go over our trial program and end it with any questions. If you have any questions, please pop them into the Q&A box and we'll be going those over those at the end of the presentation. Um, so, you know, it's kind of uh, unique times right now. Um, we're all going through some adjustments, uh, DataVox and Mercata included. Uh, and very much so empathize with what everybody's dealing with today. You know, the reality is a lot of us weren't prepared for what's happening, uh, having to adjust to a new environment, um, having to figure out how to work from home. Uh, you may be possibly dealing with situations where you're having trouble monitoring your sites and protecting your assets, uh, or you're getting busier with the things that are going on and you're trying to figure out how to um, gather more resources and improve the efficiency of your organization for bandwidth purposes. And, you know, whatever it is you're going through, we completely understand. And we just wanted you to know that we empathize with that. We're here to help you any way that we can. And today's webinar is just all about education. You know, how can we educate you on simple cloud technology that exists that could either, you know, create efficiency for your organization so that you can reduce your operating expenses and your total cost of ownership on these systems and reallocate those resources into other areas of the business, um, or how, how we can help you in this time 
or in future times where you may need to adapt quickly to a new environment and be able to still um, you know, operate and, and remotely monitor your sites and your assets. Um, so with that, Vercata, we, you know, our vision really is to help streamline and automate your physical security practices. Uh, partnering with Datavox, who has tremendous experience in this space. Uh, and, and really the goal is to um, improve your operational efficiency uh, and master emerging technology with investing little, you know, less resources into it and ultimately keeping your site safer. So with Vercata, we really aim to remove the complexity that is um, associated with traditional physical security systems. Uh, and in particular with our video surveillance solution, it's a cloud hybrid. And what that means for you is we've completely removed the NVR, DVR, and server storage devices from your network. So you no longer have to maintain a heavy infrastructure to support your video surveillance solution. And how we've done this is we've, we've installed industrial grade solid state drives into every one of our cameras. And those cameras record in high, high resolution, up to 4K resolution. And we can do anywhere from 30 all the way up to 365 days of continuous recording at 24 frames per second. And the way that the system operates is it only sends an outbound connection to the cloud through port 443. So we never tunnel back into your network from a cybersecurity standpoint, this solution is 100% secure right out of the box. Data is encrypted both on the drive and in transit to the cloud. And you have the opportunity to archive as much footage that is stored on the camera to Amazon Web Services where you can save it forever. So now you have this out of the box plug and play solution that's very simple to set up. Uh, it's just, again, plug and play, Cat5, Cat6, PoE connection. Uh, you can then access footage from anywhere on a single pane of glass from any device on any connection. And because of this design, our cameras operated extremely low bandwidth. We're talking 20 kilobits at rest, which is about as much as you'd use it to send out a Gmail. So it's a very flexible solution. Um, and it, you know, we, we have customers that have ranged from one to thousands of cameras. Um, sometimes they need to be put in very remote locations where we can run these on cradle point LTE routers with solar power and battery backup. So just know that if, if there's a need, this solution can be de deployed very quickly and it's a, a very high quality enterprise grid. And then in a couple of months, we are launching a seamlessly integrated access control product. Both of these uh, will be demonstrated here today. So throughout the presentation, if you'd like to receive a live link, it's one of the features we will be demonstrating. You know, please email your work email address or please text your work email address to the number provided on this slide. And uh, Vercata will send you a live link so that you can see how quickly you can have access to the, a live feed of the camera. It's a very powerful feature. Um, it provides real time information and analytics at your fingertips, which I believe is critical to resolving uh, situations much faster. So with that, I'm going to pass this off here to my colleague, Taylor Jung, and he's going to be doing a demonstration of our video surveillance solution. All right. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate that. Let me start sharing my screen out with everyone. Let's see here. All right. Can everyone, can you guys see my screen now? Yeah, it looks good. Perfect. So now we're jumping into the fun stuff, right? So we're about to show you guys what command looks like, and you'll notice that everything is browser-based, right? So whether on your laptop or your computer, we're eliminating the need for any sort of thick clients. Uh, and we also have native apps for iOS and Android. But you'll notice that we also have the ability to integrate with any sort of active directory or single sign-on. We actually leverage Okta here at Vercata, and Okta is one of our largest customers. And we were the only video surveillance solution that were able that was able to pass their security protocols. But with that, what I can do is I can log in here. And once I log in, what that's going to do is it's going to take me to this Google integrated map where they'll notice that we have sites across the world, right? But if I wanted to, I could take a look at our headquarters here in San Mateo where you'll notice that we have 56 cameras that are lit up in green, meaning all 56 cameras are healthy and up and running. 
So unlike traditional systems where cameras could be down for two to three weeks and you have no idea, you'll have complete visibility into the health of these cameras. All the cameras have an accelerometer built into it. So if anyone were to hit it or try and move it or receive a notification, and they also have machine learning capabilities. So if anyone were to maybe uh, move it, put a hat over it, spray paint it, do anything to distort that image, you'll also receive a notification. So by clicking any of these, they're just the live feeds. What I can also do is take a look at our floor plan, right? And this is a great way to get an understanding of, you know, where these cameras are, uh, what they're looking at. So again, I can click into any of these cameras here. What we also did is we actually just released our motion plotting, and this is actually released uh, late last week, and what it is is doing a real-time heat map of motion. Well, knowing that there's not anyone in the office, you're not going to see anything, but if there is activity, you can actually follow those folks throughout the building, right? But if I wanted to, I can click into this camera here that's looking at our front door, and here's the live feed. But there's a couple different ways we can go through this information, right? So whether it's by day or by time, but you'll notice that all of these are 24-hour thumbnails. So as opposed to fast-forwarding and rewinding, all I simply need to do is hover my mouse to left, from left to right to review the footage. We're also uniquely counting people. What I can also do is I can take a look at our heat maps. And this is a great way to get an understanding of, you know, where there's high concentration of activity inside of this frame. Uh, but if I wanted to, let's just say, for instance, something happened in front of this door, what I can actually do is I can highlight this specific area here. And if I filter by people, what that's going to do is it's going to give me every single time something has entered in that specific area. So what I can do is I can play this back, I can pause it. I can also play this back on four different cameras, right? So if I type in our lobby camera here, what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull up this camera here and I can watch this individual enter in the building here, walk through the lobby, right? But if I wanted to, let's just say I wanted to save this clip, what I can do is I can archive this clip. And when you archive clips, what it's actually doing is it's taking it from the solid state storage on the camera itself and moving it into the cloud where you can have as many archive clips as you'd like. So if you are a customer for 10 years, you'll have 10 years worth of clips. So if I actually go to my archive section and I can sort by all archives or my private archives, but if I wanted to, I can pull up this clip from January 10th. We can play this back. We can zoom in, zoom out, take a screenshot. You'll notice there's a timestamp in the upper left-hand corner for evidentiary purposes. So if you needed this uphold in court, it absolutely can. And what I can also do is I can have a running note log, like four, nine, sent to police, maybe five, ten, case closed. Now you can download this in your traditional MP4 format, whether you put on a thumb drive, hard drive, pass it around. But when we do that, what we found is that you lose all custody of that clip, right? So you don't know who has it, who's viewing it. You don't, get, you don't know if it's getting put on social media in today's age. So with that feedback from our customers, we actually built the ability to share a specific clip to a specific person for a specific period of time. And this is just the safest way of sharing clips on the market. Now, the other thing I can do is I can take a look at our sites. And keep in mind, you can have as many sites as you'd like. So if you have 10 different locations across Texas, you can have 10 different sites. But let's just say, for instance, someone says, hey, look, Taylor, there's a fire outside of your office. What I can do is I can type in the name of that camera, and it's going to automatically take me in the live feed where clearly nothing's happening. But let's just say there was a fire, there was a burglary, you know, worst case scenario, there's an active shooter. Something's happening where I need to share this live feed in the hands who matter most. We actually built the ability to share a live feed to a specific person for a specific period of time. And we are the only solution on the market that's doing this. And if you are interested in getting a live stream, just text 888-343-7537 with your email address, and you will get this live feed. Now, the other thing we did is we actually built upon that. So if I wanted to, um, not only can I share one live stream, I can actually share the entire site. And I can also share the entire floor plan, right? So if something's happening and they wanted to see the entire view of all of your cameras on your um, on your account, you can share sites as well. If I go back to this camera here and I take a look at the settings, what I can do is I can do a couple different things. So if I pull up my motion alerts, what you can do is you can think of this as though it's a digital alarm system, right? So let's just say, for instance, there was a door here, maybe another door here, and maybe I wanted to get notified in the alpha hours during the week from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Maybe no one's supposed to be here on the weekends at all times, right? I can actually layer as many of these filters as I'd like. We just want to make sure you're being proactive as opposed to reactive in your video surveillance.
Now, under the audit log, what you'll find is a couple of field of, a couple of different folks are giving demos, others are viewing the cameras. We also want to make sure that you have all the analytics behind these cameras, so you can actually download this in a CSV file. Now, what I can also do is if I pull up our lobby camera here, we can actually build what we call our people analytics. So what this does is it shows me all the unique individuals that have actually entered in this specific camera frame. But what I can also do is I can search for specific people by specific criteria, right? So maybe I want every single person in a red top, right? What this is going to do is it's going to give me every single person in a red top. Uh, but if I wanted to, I can actually take that one step further. And if I actually have a photo of someone, I can actually upload a photo of them. And I should have a photo of our founder, Hans, here. So I upload a photo of a specific person. What that's going to do is it's going to give me every single time they have actually entered in all of our cameras, right? And what we're trying to do and the goal behind something like this is to make it very easy for you to find specific people. But what you can actually do is you can kind of take that same concept or methodology and you can apply it to the outdoor cameras as well. So I pull up that camera that we had just shown and I go on to the vehicle tab. What this is gonna do, it's gonna give me all the unique vehicles that have entered in this specific camera frame. Now, let's just say, for instance, that I knew that it was a white vehicle, right? I can actually filter by the color of the vehicle, but maybe I knew that it wasn't a truck or an SUV, it was actually a white car, right? So what this is gonna do, this is gonna give me every white car. Now, if I wanted to take this one step further, I can actually say, hey, look, maybe I want every white Honda. I can search by the actual make of that vehicle, and now this is gonna give me every white Honda that's a car that is entered in this specific camera frame. The other thing I wanna show is our viewing station, right? So what you can do with our viewing station, you can think of it as though it's a managed device. So you have a unique partnership with Apple and we leverage the power of the Mac mini. And essentially you can have up to 36 live low latency streams at once. And it's simply pushing it to an HDMI screen or a wall. So there's no username, no password. So if you have a security card, that only needs access to the cameras um, when they're on site. This is a great way to give them access to those cameras. Now, if I wanted to, I can take a look at how we can add and remove users. So for instance, if I wanted to go here and I wanted to go to users and groups, and maybe I wanted to add <coughs> Taylor John at sammateopd.gov, what I can actually do is I can assign them to a group, and you can think of a group as a predetermined permission set, right? So if I add them to the sales group, what this is gonna do, oh, this is not working, maybe IT, there we go. This is gonna automatically give me access to specific sites, right? So I'm a site admin for the Florida, I have no access to Chicago, so it's very easy to add and remove access from or for specific users. Um, but outside of that, that's kind of really what I had to show you guys from the camera side of things. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, um, with that, uh, we're gonna have Nima come in and demonstrate our access control product. All right. Nima, you should have the ability to share your screen now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Taylor. Um, just going to share it out real quick. Um, am I looking good? Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Taylor, for giving a rundown of the cameras. Um, you know, now to go into access control, um, you know, Vercata is a physical security company. So, you know, obviously cameras w w was our first product. Um, we found a lot of success there. Customers love the way that uh, footage is shared, how instantly it's shared, um, how, how quickly they can share it out with police. Um, you know, they love the fact that their IT department didn't have to manage NVRs and DVRs and set up complex networking between site to sites, um, have a, v, a VPN to access the actual camera feed. Uh, that's really a thing of the past. Um, with Bricada, uh, we decided to go into access control because naturally what a lot of our customers that had our security cameras wanted was one pane of glass to manage everything uh, in their smart building. Uh, in the future, we're thinking about ways maybe HVAC, alarm, PA, and lighting can all talk to each other all from one platform. Um, but a majority of our customers, they want one single pane of glass 
manage the cameras and the door access. Um, so talking about access control specifically, this is traditionally what it looks like. Uh, on the left, you have what's called the mercury boards, and those are the actual physical hardware that controls, you know, uh, whether a door should be open, closed, the request for exits, the door position sensors, they all run back to this piece of hardware here. Uh, and then this piece of hardware then talks to uh, either a local PC uh, or it talks to a virtual machine. Uh, and that local PC usually has the software that controls the door access uh, uh, from there. Uh, and Vercata really sees a lot of problems with this architecture. Number one, it's extremely hard to manage if you have multiple sites. Um, setting up the networking between these local PCs uh, can become complex, it can become difficult. Uh, these PCs, if they go down, you can't manage uh, your door software, you can't uh, add a new user, you can't modify door schedules, uh, and really it's a huge pain point for a lot of um, And then that's one aspect. On the left, you actually have the hardware itself, and really these Mercury boards, um, they're designed from about 30 years ago. They only have megabytes of memory in them. Um, and that's in stark contrast to Verkata's door controllers. We actually have gigabytes of memory in our door controller. Um, so it allows us to do a lot of cool things, like we can download footage from cameras, do artificial intelligence on the door controller itself. It's really a new way about thinking of physical security uh, as a whole. So with that, um, you know, we, we, we thought about it exactly like the cameras, right? So there's no local PC involved. There's no virtual machine involved. There's no Windows box involved that, you know, runs a, a SQL server that keeps track of, you know, who comes in and who comes out. That's, again, really a way of thinking from the past. Um, we're compatible with a lot of existing badge readers, um, and we also have our own badge readers as well. Um, so a lot of our customers love to use our badge readers to leverage the use of Bluetooth in their phone to actually download the Verkata Pass app from the App Store or the Android Store, and they'll use that phone uh, to actually get into the door. Uh, so it, it, it's re we're really a forward-thinking company. We're thinking about these things, um, and the great thing is, is we don't charge uh, 20 different licenses, license fees to actually utilize this feature. It's much different. Um, the big thing is there's no servers to manage, there's no databases to maintain, and managing multiple sites is an absolute breeze um, because, again, there's no server involved. You don't need to think about, oh, well, you know, does my location, do I need to spin up a server there? How do I get it talking to another site that has another server there? Um, that doesn't exist with Verkata. Um, this is the actual hardware, and this is what it looks like. This is our, our four-door controller. Um, and then how this, this uh, uh, product works is you have on the right the power supply. Uh, which is included with the access controller. And then on the left, you have the actual door controller itself. Uh, it has a 12 digit serial number, exactly like the cameras. Uh, and you put in that serial number into your command account. And that's how you link this piece of hardware with the software, which is web based and you can access it from anywhere without a VPN. Um, this guy plugs into a networking switch and it also has a second ethernet port so that if you have more doors, you can daisy chain those off of each other and you can have uh, multiple doors from there. This is another view of what it looks like. Uh, it's certainly a, a stark contrast to what you see uh, uh, in the previous picture, right? Again, those are designs from about uh, uh, 20 to 30 years ago. This is the 21st century, and this is what our product looks like. Uh, so this is uh, essentially what our badge reader looks like. Um, I mentioned before that, you know, if you have uh, employees that have phones, it's obviously, you know, 21st century, everyone has a phone. If someone forgets a badge, um, they want to still get in. They just download the Ricotta Pass app, log into, their, log into the app, hold their phone up to the door, and that's how they get in. Um, so this is what, what, what our, our badge reader looks like. Just going to switch tabs really quick. Um, you know, Taylor gave you a rundown of the cameras, and, and it's much the same on, on, on my screen as well. Um, how you add a device is really simple. Um, how you add a camera, how you add a, a door controller is all from one tab. Traditionally, you'll have to plug in a camera, find the local IP. Uh, if that camera goes down, you're going to have to, you know, do some networking to figure out where it is on your network, you know, what IP it has. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty complex, right? But with Verkata, you have a 12-digit serial number. It's unique to each camera, unique to each door controller. You input it right here. You click Add Device, and it's a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to provision the door controller or the camera. And then once you do, you'll get a tab here called Access. So this is huge because traditionally, customers that have you know, a VMS system and they have the door controller software, uh, it's really hard to get those two pieces working together. Not only that, but when you get it working together, uh, there's a lot of license fees that you have to pay and the integration is not smooth. Verkata is the only company in the world that has an organic integration between the cameras and the door access. The same engineers that work on the camera's firmware, the same engineers that work on the camera hardware, they're the same people that are working on the door access. 
Um, so again, I just go to access, I click on doors, and over here, I'll have a list of all the doors that are electrified on the Verkata system. Um, so as you can see, this is uh, how it's segmented out for us. We have, you know, different buildings. Uh, this is the Verkata HQ. We have different floors. Uh, I can remotely unlock a door by clicking the padlock. If I hover my mouse over the, the actual box, I can see a live feed of the door. Um, I have the name of the door and I have the position of the door as well. Uh, if I go to users, this is where I can essentially manage all of the people that have uh, access or, or rather have a key card within my organization. And it's important to mention we have an organic integration with Active Directory as well. So if you delete a user in Active Directory, it'll downstream to the platform here. If I wanted to add a user manually, super simple. I can do this from my phone if I wanted to. I go to add user. I put in the key card number. I put in the facility code, put their name if I wanted to, click save. You're done. You're off to the races. Um, let's just say I wanted to, to dive into a particular user that already has a badge. So this is Aaron, for example. If I go and I look at history for Aaron, it'll show me exactly when Aaron badged into my facility. And I have the camera evidence to go right along with it. Um, really simple to pull up footage of when someone came in, um, because again, that badge is associated with Aaron and that camera automatically pulls up the feed when I click on it and it'll sync up the times um, and I'll have the clip ready to go right here. Um, so that's huge. Usually when I ask customers, I say, hey, look, can you guys do this with your current system? They say, well, I can't. A or B, give me a few hours and I have to go and find, uh, you know, the time that someone badged in on my door controller software, get a pen and a piece of paper and find out uh, what time that was on my video management software. Um, so again, it's, it's, this is one single pane of glass, making it really easy. Uh, obviously, I can come in here, I can deactivate Aaron's card, I can add a new card for Aaron, and obviously we have the ability to scan a card on a badge reader and we can associate that with Aaron as well. Really useful if you forget the facility code, which is obviously something that happens sometimes if you have multiple cards. Um, if I go to access groups, this is where we can set groups for our employees. So we have one access group called all employees, and this includes everyone that works at Mercata. Um, and what we can do is when we add them here, uh, we have an access level. So access levels are essentially what tells us which doors do people have access to and when do they have access to them. And it's really easy to make that template and assign them to multiple users. And that's a huge pain point that we find with people who have existing systems. They say it is the hardest thing ever to try and get uh, a, a few employees on a certain schedule. Well, with Verkata, uh, our architecture actually allows us to provide updates instantaneously um, so that you don't actually have to go around and upgrade servers, have downtime. Um, and we can do that all from the back end. And this is essentially updates that we pushed out last week. It allows you to uh, uh, add a schedule uh, for a certain set of particular doors. Uh, and it's literally as simple as going here and sliding over which doors you want to grant access to and giving them the access group. Uh, if I wanted to, I can pull a report of a few different employees. I can pull a report of which doors they went into. And I can also pull a report of the events that happened. So with Verkata, obviously, we're artificial and we, we, use, we leverage a lot of artificial intelligence. The amount of events that we have that we can track are going to grow over time. So, for example, right now we have access rejected events, door held opens. In the future, we're thinking about ways to integrate our camera's artificial intelligence to do face matching and really do a two-factor to verify if someone is actually them when they pull the badge up against the door. Um, door jammed open, that's another one that we're currently working on. And again, our architecture allows us to provide that update to you at no cost and it's instant. Um, so again, really different way of thinking about your door access. It gets better over time. What you buy today isn't what you're going to have five to 10 years from now. Um, just jumping into the doors again really quickly. Um, just want to show you what this looks like. Let's go to entry from reception. Uh, so this is our front door. Um, on one side, we have a live feed of a camera on one side, and the other side, we have it on the other side. Um, if I want to, I can remotely unlock the door here using this padlock. Really simple to do that. If I scroll down, uh, I have a list of exactly who came into my office and I have the video feed to go along with it. So this is actually one of our other solutions engineers, Ryan Malley. Um, and if I click on the feed, it'll instantaneously load up the, the, the cameras. It'll automatically sync the time so I don't need to do anything. Uh, and it shows him badging into the door, just as simple as that. And let's just say that this guy was an intruder. He wasn't actually who he was supposed to be. I can download this and I can share it with the proper authorities in a matter of minutes. Um, and that's very hard to do on an NVR because, again, that, that clip would live, you know, on the NVR at a separate location. You'd have to pull it. Some people burn it to a disk, a USB, whatever it may be. Um, this streamlines the process for getting evidence into the people's hands that need it the most. 
um, just exiting out of here, um, let's just say that, you know, I want to drill down into a particular time. I have this beautiful UI graph, um, and then I can select a certain time period, um, and then I can drill down even more by going to access projected events. Uh, and this will tell you over the time period that I selected, who tried to come into my facility and their access was rejected. And these are all of the clips of when someone tried to badge in their card and it didn't work. Um, so really easy to find that clip. Um, it did not take 30 minutes to an hour. It literally took me 10 seconds and that's huge. Um, schedules. Obviously, I mentioned schedules are big. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of schools we talk to, a lot of different organizations we talk to, they always have exceptions, right? There's a meeting that's going on. The door needs to be open for a certain period of time. Uh, there's a volleyball game, there's basketball, whatever it may be. 100%, um, we get that. That's why we added the ability to add an exception to a particular door or a few particular doors. Um, so, for example, we had a company ski trip, uh, and that was seven days long, and we were all out of the office. Um, so what we did was we made sure we locked down all the doors, set that as a temporary template, and then when we came back, everything was, was set to normal. Um, here's the, 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 the best part, though. Adding a camera to a door could never have been simpler. You go to settings, you go to add camera, and this is your list of all the cameras that are in, in Bricada door access. Notice how I don't have to find the local IP address of a camera. I don't have to make sure there's a license that exists between my door controller and my VMS. It's literally as simple as going over here, doing a checkbox, clicking confirm, and I can add that to my, to my door right here. Really simple. Lastly, uh, I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to do a search. Now, we're trying to make things as simple as going to like Google and doing a Google search, right? Let's just say I'm trying to look for me. I'm trying to look for when I came into a building at what time. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type in my name. And once I do, I haven't been in the office for a while. Once I do, it'll show you exactly where I was and at what particular time I came in. So this is elevator. We don't have a camera set up in our elevator yet, but what we do, um, it'll go ahead and show you a live feed of, or a feed rather of me badging into the elevator. Uh, this is me coming into the garage door. Um, you know, just scrolling down here, this is uh, me coming into the front building. Uh, again, everywhere that I was, it tracks right here, and it's really easy to find out, um, you know, exactly where I was and get that video evidence in the people's hands that need it the most. Um, and that's huge for Mercata because, again, single pane of glass, we're not only a camera company, we're a physical security company. We're thinking about ways to build smart sensors, not just cameras, not just door access. Um, this is a platform that you know, it, it's for your entire building and it's something that is going to be expanded on and, and, and gets better and better as we go. Um, so I know that was a lot of feature dumping um, and, you know, I, I kind of wanted to show you guys everything, but I, I'm, I'm sure that there's some questions. Um, so I'm actually going to pass the, the torch back over here to, to Chad um, and then uh, we will uh, go ahead and answer those questions. Thanks, Nima. One second here, guys. Let me get my screen back up. Right. So again, we went through a lot um, just to kind of bring it all back in for you guys. Um, why customers love Verkata? First of all, it's very easy. Um, you can quickly and easily deploy as many cameras as you need. You don't have to rip everything out all at once. You can get a couple of cameras in strategic areas to start remotely monitoring your sites with ease of access and ease of use. Um, and it's going to significantly reduce the infrastructure you have on premise, um, which allows you to be very flexible um, in the environment you'll need to work in, um, as well as it will help reduce your operating expenses so you can reallocate those resources into other areas. Um, you know, automatic firmware updating is huge. The cameras update themselves. I, can't tell you how many customers give us feedback on the amount of time they invest, whether it's even annually, quarterly, whatever the schedule may be. Um, it, you know, there's a lot that goes into maintaining VRs, DVRs, server storage. And if you're not maintaining those devices, you're then opening up a huge security threat on your network. Um, uh, you know, the, it's a smart solution, the proactive alerting that can give you real-time alerts on threats that may be happening at your site, things like when a camera goes offline. You know, there are teams that are dedicated to going around to every site just to make sure cameras are up and running, um, and it takes hours to do that, whereas our system will proactively alert you if a camera goes offline. 
or if you want to receive alerts if someone's tampering with your device. Uh, someone, you know, hits the camera with a bat or tries to rip it off the ceiling or the wall with a crowbar. You're going to receive real-time alerts of those incidences. Um, and lastly, you know, if, if you want to be notified based on motion, motion alerting is built into our system natively. You can receive alerts if people are accessing doorways or, you know, gates, um, you know, or walking by uh, parts of your building or your site after hours or on the weekends, you can set up those types of schedules. Being able to quickly share live video. Um, you know, we had a credit union in Chicago get in under a hostage situation. One of the employees was able to quickly share out a camera from inside the building to the police and they were because they had so much visibility into what's go, what was going on they were able to quickly resolve that situation. Newtown Public Schools out of Connecticut where the Sandy Hook shooting happened bought our solution based on this feature alone. You know, had they had the ability to share out cameras that quickly um, to the people that mattered most, it would have helped them resolve the situation much faster. Uh, the motion based searching you know, there was a, a school, Zionsville ISD, uh, you know, had a box of ammunition show up in the parking lot. They were able to quickly do a motion grid around the area where that ammunition was found uh, and quickly found the vehicle that dropped the ammunition there and resolved a lockdown in about 30 minutes, which on a traditional system to search that quickly for that type of information could have taken hours. Um, you know, looking at our roadmap, just being able to streamline and automate, I mean, this is where the world is shifting. The world changes very quickly. And so, you know, being more flexible and being able to adapt quickly to any environment is critical. And this, these types of solutions can help your business with, with those transitions. And then lastly, the people and vehicle analytics, you know, the ability to upload a face uh, or search someone based on the color of clothing. Let's say a student goes missing, um, or you're looking for someone suspicious, being able to instantly find those results right even from your cell phone, uh, it can help you know, resolve critical situations much faster. And then you know, uh, the, the ability to instantly scale this solution uh, as time allots and as the need grows um, is you know, very simple with, with Verkata. Lastly, having the 10 year product warranty just ensures that we're backing your hardware investments along with an all-inclusive license. So if we launch new features and we launch updates to our platform, those are all inclusive to the paying customer. So we do offer a free trial program. If any of you on the um, webinar today are interested in receiving a free trial, it will be noted in the survey that you receive so you can check the box to receive one. Um, this is no obligation free trial for you to test one of our cameras and see for yourself how simple it is. Or you can email scott at datavox.net and he can connect you with the right folks that can hook you up with a trial camera. So we did have some questions. Uh, give me a second here. I'm going to pull those up. Um, if uh, Taylor and Nima want to unmute so we can do these together, probably just read these off and then you guys can help me answer these. Uh, so the first one is for Taylor. Do we have do do you have any Wi-Fi cameras? Yeah, we do. We actually pushed out that functionality uh, last night. So you do have enterprise grade uh, Wi-Fi. Our CD61 and TM61 have the ability to connect via Wi-Fi. So that was something that was actually brand new as of uh, last night. Awesome. Yeah, and then just on to add to that, guys, um, you can also run our cameras on LTE Cradle Point routers. Uh, and or a point to point, you know, so there's ways we can make this a wireless solution and get these cameras into very remote locations. And with the low bandwidth requirements, you know, it, it doesn't require a ton to be able to do that. Thanks, Taylor. Um, second question for you, do your cameras work on vehicles like buses? Yeah, we've had a couple of schools use um, uh, cameras with buses. So similar to kind of what we're talking about with the remote viewing. All you simply need to do is have a cradle point and an LTE connection, right? So uh, you can get power from the bus itself, or you can also have kind of a power backup, but we've definitely seen bus deployments in the past. Yep, and then for those, uh, for reference, Wichita Falls ISD in North Texas is using our cameras on about 30 of their buses. Um, 
Can you search license plates? I'll let so, Nima. <laughs> yeah, Nima, you want to that. take that one? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can search license plates. Um, that's a functionality that's actually built out. I tested it yesterday um, and it works. We're just waiting to push it out to our customers. Awesome. Thank you. Um, can a live stream be embedded onto a web page? Yeah, I'll take that one since I, I missed it on the demo. Yeah, it absolutely can. So what we do is we provide you a link to embed on an iframe on your website. And what it actually does is it takes one stream into the cloud and multiplexing it, multiplexes it, meaning you can have thousands of, thousands of concurrent viewers at the same time with the same amount of impact on your bandwidth as one live stream. So there's a ton of different use cases around this, right? We have had schools use this for graduation, football games, softball games. The Golden Gate Bridge is actually using us for a live feed of the bridge on their website, if you want to check that out. Um, so there's, there's a ton of different use cases around the embed feature. Awesome. Um, and I think this was answered, but will multiple viewers eat up my bandwidth? No, so kind of going back to the, the multiplexing it, right? So um, if you have, you know, 100 people looking at the same camera, it, again, it's going to take it up into the cloud and multiplexing it, and multiplex it, meaning it's going to have the same bandwidth consumption as just one live stream. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, do you have a mobile app? We do, yeah, and it's uh, it's at parity with the web browser. Um, I'm trying to name it. I don't know if I shared my phone with WebEx, but uh, we do have a mobile app, and it's native to iOS and Android. So you can do everything from you know face search, share live uh, feeds, look at the floor plans, archive video, um, pretty much everything that you can do in command. Yeah, and if anybody's interested, we can always set up a personalized demo for you and take you through all of these. Um, do the cameras record audio? Yep, we do have cameras that record audio. Okay, perfect. And then how do the cameras work in the dark? Nima, do you want to just give a little bit more detail about the IR illuminators? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so all the cameras that Ricotta builds, uh, has IR illuminators. So it doesn't matter which model you get, which model you're going with, um, they all have IR illuminators built in. Um, we have cameras that go up to 100 meters. Um, it really depends. And we also have support for external IR illumination. Um, so it's one thing customers love is, is you know, any camera they get has uh, a really good night vision. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then Nima, this will be for you. Um, does access control work without the cameras? Yep, it does work without the cameras. Um, what you'll see is you'll just see kind of like, a, uh, I don't know, like a drawing of a door um, that's generic and you'll see like a light next to the door and that'll um, turn green and red as someone opens the door and comes in and that's live. Um, you just won't see a camera feed, but 100% it'll work without the cameras. Perfect. And then last one for you, Nima, uh, what type of readers are supportive? Is it only HID? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it really depends. Um, it depends on a few things. Uh, so it depends on uh, what protocol they use. Um, and, you know, we can obviously set up a one-on-one -on -one demo to go you know, further into your situation, what type of cards you guys use. Um, you know, chances are if you have HID readers, it'll work. Um, if you have different types of readers, we'll have to see. Um, but, you know, we're always open to, you know, you guys sending in your guys' cards, and we'll actually go ahead and engineer it towards your guys' cards. That's something we've done in the past, and something you know we'll be happy to do. Awesome. Uh, looks like that's it for the questions. I'll pass it back over to Jessica or Scott if they want to wrap this up. Uh, hey, Chad, I had a couple other questions for you. Uh, one uh -huh. was around storage. Um, how long can you store video on Bricotta cameras? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, on a five megapixel camera, we can store up to 365 days of continuous recording at 24 frames per second. If you're doing 4K resolution or you're utilizing our fisheye camera, uh, those would be up to 90 days retention. Okay, and how does that work? Do you need, do you have storage? Is it storage on the cameras? Yeah, correct. It's a solid state drive built into the camera. So everything's stored on the camera itself, eliminating the need for any sort of on-prem NVR, DVR server storage. Okay, perfect. And then high level, how do you guys compare to some of your other partners out there in the market? Yeah, good question. 
Uh, so from like a traditional video surveillance standpoint, we're completely different. We have a completely different architecture that is really designed to remove the complexity that is associated with video surveillance uh, and streamlining those practices to make things more efficient for your organization. Then in terms of video surveillance that would be similar to ours, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to see how it, they built it. Um, and we got to rebuild it from scratch. So what you'll find is much lower bandwidth consumption, much higher uh, imaging, imaging coming from the cameras. Uh, you know, the smart cameras, we have quad core processing and Borella chips built into our cameras, which are capable of processing about 20 times the amount of information as a normal camera on the market today. And what that allows us to do is a lot of the analytics on the device itself before we send it to the cloud. With our VStream technology and our natively built-in analytics, you can, you can uh, populate results on people analytics and vehicle analytics instantaneously within seconds that are 98% accurate. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Chad. Um, you know, in closing, I just wanted to chat with you guys. I, I, we've been, Databox has been a partner with Verkata now for a while, and, you know, we've seen, we've seen a lot of companies out there over the years, and, you know, these guys seem to be the most innovative in the, in the industry today. I really like the idea that, you know, something that we ask for, such as license plate uh, recognition, license plate searching, you know, they're in development. And, you know, the next time you log into your software, you're going to, you're going to get these, get to experience these new features. The, you know, the other day we had, or a few months back, sorry, we had a an introduction to uh, their, their, their analytics and it was extremely impressive. Um, and then the day before we looked at it, it wasn't there. So, you know, that's one thing that's extremely strong about this, about video surveillance and, the, and access control in the cloud is pushing out these new features, uh, you know, without you guys even knowing, and you just automatically get them. Um, I'm very impressed by that. Uh, with that being said, I wanted to thank you guys for attending these webinar series. Like I said, this is the third one this week for physical security. Um, I want to thank you to thank, give a thanks to Chad, Taylor, and Nima for taking their time this morning to help put this together. Uh, I want to thank again the marketing team and from Everyone at Datavox, uh, we hope that your family stays safe and during these times. So I appreciate it. Over to you, Jessica. Thank you, Scott. And thank you so much to Verkata, Chad, Taylor, Nima. I really appreciate it. Uh, we want to thank all of you for joining today's webinar. As a reminder, the recording link will be, will, uh, sorry, the recording link for today's session will be emailed to all attendees 24 to 48 hours post event. If you did enjoy today's session and would like to hear more, we do offer new webinars weekly. Please check our Databox website for more information on upcoming sessions. And as always, we would love to hear your feedback on our events. Once this webinar has ended, you will be redirected to a survey page. If you could please take a moment to complete the survey before closing out your browser, we would greatly appreciate it. And also don't forget to put in your address or email information so you are able to get those promotional gifts. Um, that concludes our session for today. Thank you again to Mercada for a great presentation and thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.